perfect so before we start with the actual session or actual uh, webinar let me give you a brief about our company so uh, hello everyone once again i am dr ajit shah from quantum corp health private limited we provide the spectrum of centralized health services under one roof so we mark our existence by serving complete and comprehensive healthcare facilities and it's headed by a team of doctors we are there in the market since over a decade and we have served with more than 500 uh, corporate companies till now uh we got the one of the largest team of doctors highly qualified medical professionals we all are here to take care of your health it's headed by dr bhavya vankar who is the director of our company and dr narendra vankar who is the ceo the services which we offer we can uh, bifurcate into two different services one is uh, the corporate wellness and the other one is the individual care when i talk about corporate wellness it includes pre employment health checkup annual health checkup pre policy health checkup uh, checkup corporate audits we are also into group medical claim insurance uh, lately you know because of this pandemic we have also started with the segment of covid testing uh, which includes rt pcr antigen antibody testing uh, we also have a unique system for uh, the uh, corporates which is by the name of plug and play health support system we also provide online doctor consultations and also we are into specialist doctor consultation as well apart from this we do provide medical devices uh, in the name of levia we also have sally as a medical device we provide in house doctors paramedics and ambulance service we conduct health talk shows and webinars this being one of them we are also into mind wellness uh, activities we provide hospitalization pan india uh, we are also into women health and first aid and medical camps our esteemed clients i mean you navy then we have it so uh, right from dvk future group about ikea gmr dabur tata capital aditya birla bsc dmart lnt schindler these are few of our esteemed clients which we are serving in terms of corporate wellness and these are very few because uh, the number goes on increasing and we have around 700 uh, you know clients whom we are catering to till now okay so uh, that's all from my end in terms of the introduction of our company i'll quickly uh, stop my screen share and uh, just allow me a minute guys great so uh, it gives me an honor to uh, uh, welcome our speaker for today dr nikita laj Uh, she has done her mbbs in gynecology she also done her fellowship in uh, reproductive medicine and also she has completed a diploma in gynec and obstetrics so uh, not taking much of the time ma'am uh, welcome to our forum welcome to the webinar thank you so much for taking up your valuable time out and you know conducting this webinar uh, so uh, all uh, all yours ma'am you can share your screen thank you uh ma'am you're on uh, mute if you can one second yeah hi everybody and i hope you guys can hear me can you hear me now yes yes pretty much clear okay uh i am dr nikita thanks for the invite and i hope i can try to complete your overall you know questions about pcod pcos i'm just going to have a short presentation after that i would like to take up questions if you have you know you can keep the you know whatever is in your mind you don't need to know you can even put it on the chat box and later we can take down the questions and like today i'm going to talk to you all on a very common topic polycystic ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovarian disease which is also known as and this is very common i see around in my consulting even out of 10 patients six patients might be having this and it's so uh, you know sometimes it's so scary because nowadays because of the internet people go online and try to google what is uh, you know irregular periods and pcod pops up and they freak out thinking what do what is my daughter going through or am i having going to pcos will i ever get pregnant afterwards you know because there's a lot of miss you know communication or misunderstanding what only online what it says so i think you should never freak out and you should go to uh, one second i can't start Great, wrong start. Okay, okay. So I I hope you can see my second slide. 
So what is polycystic ovarian syndrome? It's an hormonal disorder among women of reproductive age. So that is, you know, reproductive age is between 18 to 20 when people start planning their pregnancy and when people try to, you know, go for the conceiving and they realize, oh, I, why am I not conceiving even after a year or two? So here, which I show a picture, which is the uterus, which looks like a pear shape. That's the uterus. You can see two fallopian tubes and ovaries. So what is the pear shaped organ is the womb wherein you carry the pregnancy in that. And the two fallopian tubes, which you can see the thin flimsy thing, that's the tube wherein the egg which releases is held by the tube. And the ovary is very important because this is where PCOS acts. That is the polycystic ovary wherein you can see many follicles in the PCOS patients. Naturally, the eggs have to grow and rupture. And in these PCOS patients, the eggs do not grow itself. That's why they do not get their period. So that's the reason they have very irregular periods. If you ask somebody, you know, they might not get their period every 30 days. They might take 40 days, 60 days sometimes. Some people come to me saying, I get period only three times in a year, which is very wrong. You need to make sure that you bleed within 45 days. If you do not, you need to take some progesterone pills and make sure your endometrium is shed. Otherwise, in future, you can have a problem. So this is what I like to tell the teenage girls that, you know, you don't have to worry if you do not bleed every month, but you need to make sure your endometrium is shed. So it is a disorder involving infrequent or prolonged menstruation. So some teenagers, very common, they will come with, you know, excessive bleeding. The bleeding is not stopped for more than 10 to 15 days. So these are the kind, they can be borderline PCOS, wherein we make sure their hormonal disbalance is maintained. And that will take care of their, uh, you know, making sure, see, PCOS are endocrinological disorders. You can't say, Oh, is it gone? If I take the medicine, will it go? No, it's like diabetes, hypertension. It's an endocrinological disorder. So you have to make sure if the basic is lose weight, exercise, that will take care. If you do not do that, you will become obese because of the hormonal disbalance. And then it's going to be very tough. And what happens in this, there is an excess androgen hormone. So you will see most of the PCOS girls having hair on their upper lip chin, they have male pattern, you know, obesity on the lower tummy. So you come to know that maybe is she a PCOS patient? The ovaries develop numerous small cysts which may fail to release the egg. So PCOD is again a short form for polycystic ovarian disorder and it's considered a hormonal disorder which affects women during their reproductive age. So this can be termed uh, this can be termed to a health condition that affects commonly young teenage women and found in among one in ten in every childbearing. So when I'm an IVF specialist, so whenever I see uh, my OPD, because people planning pregnancy, like I said, out of ten, four of them or five of them will be having PCOS. But it is no big deal. We make sure even with the natural medicines and just basic sonography follicular study, they have conceived. They didn't need anything ahead. But only thing in PCOS patients is they need to get married at a younger age. With now, everybody thinking about their careers, people come in to get married, only they plan their pregnancy by 35 and everything goes haphazard. Their reproductive system is maintained by complex five hormones. So, you know, when we are planning in a PCOS profile, I tell them to do the FSH, LH, progesterone, estrogen. So what happens, The you know, they have a luteinizing hormone. So we call it LPD, luteal phase defect in these patients. So the progesterone level is low. So sometimes you see a PCOS patient getting pregnant and they keep aborting. Why? Because the progesterone is low. Just with the basic support of progesterone, they can carry their pregnancy. So there is no fear. But people think, oh, PCOS means I'm, not, I'm going to have abortions. It's not necessary. You just need some basic treatment and you can carry the pregnancy. So any imbalance notice, noticed in these hormones will only leave causing a hormonal disorder which is called as PCOD or PCOS. So causes, okay, so many people say, why do I have PCOS and why not my friend who is even having irregular periods? So no specific cause has been yet identified for the PCOD, but there are some contributing factors are excess insulin production. So that's why if you hear some of my PCOS patients or most of our PCOS patients are on a tablet called as metformin, which is an anti-diabetic medicine otherwise used, but that is very commonly used in PCOS because there is an insulin production, there is an insulinemia, hyperinsulinemia. So that is the main problem in PCOS patient. So blood sugar levels are controlled by insulin hormone. 
as human cell starts to resist insulin action there is increase in the blood sugar level so you see a pcos patient if they are obese they are surely going to get diabetes in future if they are obese so remember a pcos patient has to maintain their weight nobody else is as important but a pcos patients we say obesity is no no you have to make sure you work out you exercise eat right eat right food that's going to help you so excess insulin is produced by the body to control the level of blood sugar thus increasing androgen level so what do i see in pcos androgen means it's a hormone which causes increase in hair testosterone there will be acne patients will come with pimples so these are the things what you see so excess androgen by the ovaries leads to acne and hirsutism hirsutism means lot of hair growing also cited in most of the female low grade inflammation in women is likely to stimulate ovaries thus producing an increase in androgen level so all these can be controlled by basic medicine there is nothing like what i'm saying is something major we just need to know you have an hormonal disbalance we need to treat it at the right time that will help you conceive it so what are the signs and symptoms so like i said something called as hyperandrogenism that's again a hormone test when and i will see acne hirsutism and alopecia so there is acne pimples on the face hirsutism lot of hair and alopecia sometimes there is balding in the central balding like a male balding in the female or thinning of the hair in the female insulin resistance that is hyperlipidemia so the lipid profile will increase in them they can have chances of diabetes so menstrual dysfunction like i said some people might have heavy bleeding some people might have no bleeding at all some people come to say that i have hardly two th two days i spot sometimes heavy bleeding like 7 to 10 days irregular periods don't get for 45 days 60 days and because of all this they have a lot of psychological problems anxiety depression poor self esteem because of these things so simple you have to explain them this is no big deal with the hormones we control the hair growth increases if they have balding to make sure the acne is gone we can give them some treatment if they have a lot of hair go ahead with laser all your hair is gone off doesn't matter if you need to put your kid in a laser after their 10 years you can even use laser on their face but they should not have self poor self esteem whatever is right they can do there is no side effect to all of it so some women might experience the symptoms during periods you know you come to know during periods they have get some pimple out but signs and symptoms vary and the severity also varies more with obese patients so what is the first line of treatment i always tell my pcos patient the first line of treatment is no medication lifestyle change first and foremost you have to lose weight eat right eat healthy food do not think about you know taking popping in pills that is not going to help you start exercising day one i say 45 minutes of a cardiovascular exercise not less but 45 minutes she should go for a jog that's better because if they are younger if they can jog or you know start with brisk walk and jogging mix both of them that will take care of their hormone disbalance remember all the your female hormones are in the fat tissue so you need to exercise eat healthy avoid starch avoid rice avoid sugars avoid biscuits avoid breads avoid maida all this eat healthy big bowl of salad dal is very good protein if you're eating non veg eat the roasted form do not eat the uh, you know fried fishes uh, eat more of roasted so what are the symptoms now what will the uh, you know most of you all have weight gain wherein they say i'm eating very less but still why am i putting on so much of weight what is wrong so you know i'm trying to exercise when my friend and i am going for the gym i can't lose as much she is because of pcos so what happens your hormones do not let you lose weight that easily so you have to work double hard but yes you will lose weight once do not give up it might take about 6 months more but you will lose weight sometimes like i said hair thinning that again we give you some antioxidants and some minerals it will take care of you'll see on sonography polycystic ovaries they'll say there are lots of follicles seen on the ovary that is called polycystic ovarian look skin tags sometimes you know on like a small little things coming out of the neck that's called skin tags hirsutism is wherein you have lot of hair growth irregular menstrual cycle that is every 45 days maybe 60 days two days bleeding maybe seven days bleeding pimples and dark, skin darkening especially behind the neck that is the nape of the neck that is your skin will be dark 
possible complications. Now, what are the possible complications in PCOS? So, like I said, psychological disorders, they get into depression. Because of depression, you start overeating. And that causes, again, weight gain. Abnormal bleeding in the uterine region. When you know you're bleeding for 40 days or even a month, always wearing that pad, having irritation around that area. It's not easy for a you know youngster to go through all this or even uh, age of your PCOS and you've not taken care, you've not taken the medicine at right time, you can have blood pressure and GDM. So even if you're supposed to get it at 50, 55, you can postpone to even 60, 65. If you take the treatment, exercise, diet, you will not get it. Not necessarily all PCOS patients get gestational diabetes and pregnancy-induced hypertension. So remember, these are the things if you do not take care, do not prevent it. That's the only time you will need the treatment. What are the possible complications in PCOS? So endometrial cancer, metabolic. So why endometrial cancer? So that is because you, you do not bleed every month. Your endometrium is growing thicker and thicker and you've not taken medicines to bleed. So every 30 days where you should bleed, wait for 45 days, 50 days. Yes, you, I've not bled in 50 days. I You need to take a progesterone pill. A simple progesterone pill for five days, you will bleed. After you bleed, so that will make sure your endometrium is shedding at least every two months. That is enough. If your endometrium is shedding every two months, you do not get this chance of endometrial cancer. Metabolic syndrome, like I said, the diabetes, hypertension, infertility. That happens if you get married later. So I always, when I see, um, because you know I see a lot of teenagers with PCOS, I always tell them, plan your pregnancy at the right time or at least freeze your eggs. You have a lot of options now, but do not get married by 35 and come to me by 37 and say, now I'm not getting pregnant. If you get married at the right age at 26, 27, you will not be a patient for infertility. Always plan your first pregnancy before 30. I think we should go to the olden standard where our grandmothers used to get married by 19, 20, which is not possible, but at least get married by 24, 25 and finish your family at least a first child before 30. Premature births or miscarriage, like I said, miscarriages are very common because of the progesterone level is a bit on the lower side. And sleep apnea is again because of obesity. So what is the diagnosis? Visiting the health specialist can help you diagnose the issue if you have, like I said, irregular periods or any one of those symptoms which I showed you. You can go and meet a gynec around and they might confirm that yes, you are a PCOS. Then the patient's medical history will be taken into account, detailed information pertaining the weight changes and period. That is very important. Like I said, you need to make sure that, yes, I need to exercise, eat healthy, eat right food. Whatever goes in your mouth, think before you eat. You know, when we are just sitting, everybody's dipping with chai, dipping a biscuit, which is so wrong, you know, and we feel a powada, a burger, you know, at snacks, somebody is just wants to celebrate something, eat healthy food, try to get more of nuts, peanuts, you know, dry fruits instead, and fruits more than eating all the junk. Treatment. So what is a simple treatment? I do not give a teenagers, we cannot give them birth pills. So I if they are teenage, we try to just give the, explain them how to get their period every 45, 30 to 50 days. If you are more than 20, 25 years, yes, we put you on about birth control pills for about three months to make sure your hormones is balanced. Medications called metformin to prevent diabetes is sometimes given earlier when they are pregnant. Statins to control high cholesterol levels. If your blood shows lipid level is high, cholesterol is high, then hormones to increase fertility and procedures to remove hair. So what hormones we give them simple, like I said, progesterone or sometimes just two, three days injections to make sure the egg grows. And when they have too much of hair, like I said, you should not be ashamed. You should just get rid of it. Go for a laser treatment. That is the best. Self-care, like I said, the first and foremost thing which I tell all my patients is physical exercise. I'm telling you, most of them, if the if you start taking, selecting a sport or doing some exercise regularly, you will not need to go ahead for anything else, no treatment. If you do a fast cardiovascular exercise, wherein your heartbeat is more than 140, it has to be more than 140, you have to be sweating, then only it's going to help. If you think you're going for a walk with carrying a bag or going to the market and you say, I walked for 40 minutes doing that, no. You need to walk really fast. You should be sweating. Your heart rate should increase. That will help you get your periods regular. So at least five times a week, I always say start with 30 minutes, but go up to 45 minutes to an hour and at least go ahead for five times a week. 
weight loss can improve cardiovascular health and complications and avoid obesity. So remember, weight loss is the main treatment. Weight loss, exercise, healthy food. Medications, like I said, sometimes you need to give anti-diabetic medications. We give statins and some hormones. And hair, in, if you don't want to go for laser, there are some medications which we give for three months, the hair growth decreases. Now, the main thing is lifestyle modification. So how and what do we change? So there is avoid alcohol. If some people nowadays at a young age also drink alcohol, so you should try to decrease alcohol content, body weight control, diet, lose weight, watch your diet and watch what you're eating. You cannot say that I'm just putting on weight because of PCOS. Yes, there is a chance. But if you're eating unhealthy food, you cannot always blame uh, you know, any disorder. You might be even eating wrong food, unhealthy food, more calorie food, more of junk food. So keep a watch on what you eat. So enjoy a variety of food healthy. So like you can see in the first part, what is it? You have to eat good green leafy vegetables. That's the most important part. A breakfast can have oats or eggs. You cannot have pancakes. You cannot have sugary breads. You cannot have, you know, you have make oats with fruits in it. Avoid sugars in it. So have more of fruits, eat more of proteins. You can avoid even milk. It's not necessary. Like people think milk is important for our body. Milk is important for our bones. No. It's not important only till you, you need to take calcium supplement when you're breastfeeding and when you deliver. So lifestyle habits that are, can affect your hormones. So hormones affect more than just mood. The vital chemicals enable daily bodily function, reproduction, movement, and more. Hormone affect more than just mood. The vital chemicals enable daily bodily function, reproduction, movement. So what do you do? feeling chronic fatigue. So that is not good. There has to be something. There is some problem in our body. There is some hormonal disorders. Insomnia means you're not getting sleep or poor sleep pattern. This increases physical stress and cortisol levels, which indirectly or directly cause hormonal imbalance, sweating, night sweats, hot flushes, which are uncomfortable. Then digestion problem like gas, bloating, slow digestion, common problem that aren't usually associated with hormonal. Craving. Sometimes you crave for some Rubbish food like sweets and chocolates and burgers, anxiety and depressions are clues that you have an imbalanced toxicity and getting stressed out. So if any one of these things, you might realize there is some hormonal disbalance somewhere, not getting sleep, you're suddenly having night sweats, digestion problem, craving for some food and always anxiety, you know, that fear something's going to happen. So weight management is a phrase used to describe both the technique and underlining physiological process that contributes to a person's ability to attain and maintain a certain weight. Most weight management techniques encompass long-term lifestyle. See, remember, weight is not like today you decide I'm going to lose weight, five kilos is going to happen. It is slow and steady, have patience, give it a year, make sure you eat the right food. Yes, once a week you can, you know, think about eating sweets and chocolates, but Otherwise, try to eat healthy food. It's going to help you out long term. Your kids are going to follow you. Whatever you eat, your kids are going to follow you. So try to eat healthy next to them. They are going to eat. You order a pizza and eat a burger next to them. They want that. They will be eating the same food. Weight can process food. I always say do not get those thin food. Make those rajmas. You know, you get the ready uh, pizzas, heat them, eat it. Do not do that. Sugar laden food, like, you know, uh, you know, you have these cookies, you have ice creams, white breads and pasta, avoid it. Food with high percentage calories from fat, avoid and avoid alcohol. So these are the main things in PCOS. If you change your diet, you're going to be done. That's the main thing. You just have to change your diet and your polycystic ovaries will be taken care of. Now, what is infertility? When somebody is trying to have sexual intercourse without using contraception for a year and she does not conceive, she's known as infertile. And if she's more than 37 years, you cannot wait for a year. You need to wait for six months. If in six months it doesn't happen, start investigating yourself. What is wrong? How do you plan? And remember, while investigating yourself, you do not do not forget your husband. Husband is as important, 50% male, 50% female. His semen count is really important and his minimum should be 20 million and mortality should be 39%. 
So in PCOS patient, what is the basic workup I do is an AMH thyroid prolactin. So AMH is a big, you know, that gives us all the answers. If your AMH is on the higher side, you have PCOS. You might need some hormone treatment and then you can plan your pregnancy. Thyroid is very correlated. Thyroid prolactin can be on the higher side. You need to take the treatment. Like I showed you the tube. So tubes are very important to get pregnancy. Like I said, the egg ruptures and it holds by the tube. So whether your tube is patent, it's a simple x-ray called an HSG, which is to be done on a day seven or a day eight of your period, which will tell us whether your tube is patent and a husband semen count. So this is a basic workup if you're planning a pregnancy, if you have PCOS or not, but do all this basic workup, you will have an idea how to plan ahead. Now I said PCOS, what are the symptoms? Irregular period. Amenorrhea means no period at all. You think you're pregnant, but you do your urine test again and again. You're negative always. Menorrhagia, heavy bleeding, continuous bleeding, and ovulation. The eggs do not grow. They do not rupture. And hence, you're not getting pregnant. Hirsutism, lot of hair on the face. Hyperandrogenism because of that. Insulin resistance can lead to diabetes. So treatment, like I said, just oral contraceptive pills for three months. If your sugars are a little bit on the higher side, I put you all on the metformin. Now there is a new drug called myonistrol, which in abroad, it is just like over the counter drug. It's just multivitamins, which you can add to it. Remember the first is lifestyle change and exercise and monitor ovulation. So how do you do that? So you go to a sonologist, they will start doing the sonography regular and checking whether your eggs are growing or they are rupturing, what is happening. So that is how they monitor your eggs ovulation. So sometimes we need to go ahead with an IUI. What is IUI? Is an intrauterine insemination of sperms. So what we do is we make sure your eggs grow. Once your eggs are grown, we give the rupture injection. So the, once the egg rupture, we take your husband's sperm, we wash it, put some more nutrition into the sperm and leave the sperm into the uterus. So that will increase your chance of conceiving the natural relation. So when you do not conceive a natural relation, you can go for the next step called as an IUI, wherein we monitor in a PCOS patient whether your egg is growing or not. If not growing, we make sure it grows, ruptures, and we put the sperms inside the uterus. So this is where the sperms, I would like to show you, this is how the sperms look. And this is the motility. If you can see the sperms moving. So this is on a macular chamber. We are seeing the count and motility. So this is a very good count. You can see the small, small things with the small head. That is a sperm count. So this looks like a 60 million with a very good motility. So motility means one sperm moving from one side to the other side. One side. Okay. Okay, so now sometimes we have to go ahead with something called as an... These are the follicles on the sonography. Like I said, this is what an egg is seen. This is the follicle. Inside this fluid, there is an egg. So this is called an... Where if you need an IVF, I just wanted to know some people get scared. What is IVF? It is a very simple process wherein these eggs inside every follicle, there is one egg. We remove that egg and we give it inside for testing. So this is how we remove the eggs. There are around 10 to 15 follicles in one ovary. See, this is a needle, needle coming, coming in. in. Coming and coming that's the needle. Coming, coming, coming. And that needle, make sure, see the follicle is going down. It's regressing. Once it's completely regressed, there they cure it. They turn it, show curating. This is the way they cure it. Coming, coming. And here the follicle fluid is collected. Coming, you can coming, see the fluid coming. Coming, 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 coming. Once the fluid is collected, and again, we see another follicle. It's gone to the other follicle. So this is how we go ahead with the and, the egg and these are the eggs. After we remove those, these are the eggs you can see. So these are healthy eggs from that black color follicle, which I showed you on the sonography. These are how your natural eggs are seen. And after once we have seen these eggs, we go ahead with a second procedure called as an ICSI. So these are beautiful, healthy oocytes from a female. Like I showed you the sperm, these are what is available in a female. Now, after we take the eggs, what we do is we take one of the sperm and we inject into an egg, which is called as a seed. We collect the sperms. Now, I try to see, which is I see, any moving good motile sperms, we try to hold them with a negative pressure. We take it inside the needle and we try to hold. See, you can see now we'll catch hold of the egg. This is a sperm, sorry. 
this is the sperm which we are trying to hold see now negative pressure pulled it inside the needle and we hold it so we try to collect as many eggs i got i try to hold these sperms and pick up these sperms and keep in the tube so how we do an icsi i will just show you so this is how we collected the sperms now we will take the egg so now this is the egg so we try to hold you can see i'm holding the egg from from this needle i'm pushing the sperm into the egg that is called fertilization i'm fertilizing the egg with the sperm so this is called as an icsi wherein i held the egg left the sperm inside the egg see there the sperm is left in and it comes out so this is how we do called an ivf icsi wherein when the sperm count is low in a husband where there is no chance of conceiving this is the simplest procedure which has given 60 to 70% chances of pregnancy wherein husband has zero count in these patients also we take the sperms with a biopsy and we do an icsi and given them pregnancy this is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection you can see simply the embryologist holds this whatever eggs i remove they inject one one sperm into the egg and they create the embryo so this is so simple for you know to get pregnancy previously about 20 years back there was nothing like this the count is low egg quality is bad there is no other option go adopt a child but here we have so many options at any age we can give pregnancy even at a 40 42 years old people come in nowadays we can give them pregnancy because of this newer technique called icsi so this is a beautiful blastocyst we call this a blastocyst if we see such a blastocyst we know that the patient is going to get pregnant so we let the embryo grow once we created the icsi we put it in the incubator incubator will act like the womb the temperature everything atmosphere will be like the uterus and in that this is the blastocyst which will grow and if i transfer this blastocyst it gives you 70% chance of conceiving abroad now us uk only believe in transferring a single embryo transfer where they don't want twins or twin triplets here they only transfer a single blastocyst wherein you have the highest chance of conceiving so we let the embryos grow maximum to a blastocyst that is a day 5 embryo single embryo transfer on a day 5 will prevent multiple pregnancies that will prevent preterm births otherwise you know because of twins or triplets the person delivers earlier because a uterus can't hold so many same a uterus can hold twins to ninth month if you have triplets is very rare so now only single embryo transfer is the future fetal reduction is another option when we see triplets or quadruplets but nowadays even in india we do not transfer more than two good blast or a single blast that gives a higher chance of conceiving to 70% so i hope everyone thanks thanks a lot for hearing me out and i hope everyone got in gist of pcos plus what is infertility you know i wanted you all to know what is it otherwise there's so much of confusion people think you know i don't want to go to a fertility specialist but sometimes you need to go at the right time and treat yourself right pcos is very simple just with hormone treatments we have even made sure the eggs grow and told the husband to keep relation if the count is fine and they have conceived so there is no issue in conceiving if everything is fine in them so i want to keep the platform open if anybody has any questions you know i am here to answer you all so please uh, write down the questions in the chat box or ask me hi everyone uh, first of all thank you so much dr nikita for such a wonderful session you know such a wonderful session and especially the videos you know uh, they were amazing uh, that given exact overview exactly how it happens you know and there are people you know who still have this doubt of what is iva what is iui and uh, you made it a point that everything is pretty much clear and transparent so once again thank you so much for such such a wonderful uh, presentation Uh, heading towards our uh, question answer session if you have any question guys out there uh, you know please put it in the chat box we'll be happy to answer okay so we have got the question uh, what i'll do uh, doc is i'll ask the question and then you can uh, replicate accordingly or reciprocate accordingly so the question is from ms elizabeth the question is which hormonal pill is best for regular periods okay 
one second i'll just unmute you i guess Uh, Ma'am, if you can unmute yourself, I think you are on mute. So the thing is, uh, Elizabeth, you know the there are many nowadays. But if you are a younger age, at a thirty years, because you know now previously there used to be very high dose estrogen progesterone, which used to cause complications like weight gain, water retention. But nowadays there is cyproterone acetate. So there is Yasmin, Dronis. There are many of these drugs which do not cause any of these problems, and your periods are regularized. Plus, you can even prevent pregnancy during that time. And so there is Yasmin. Any of these cyproterone acetate will help you. You know, uh, using those pills for twenty days, you can use it for six to seven months continuously. After seven months, I would say take two to three months break and then restart it. Do not continuously take it for a year or two. So take it for six months, stop for two three months, and then if you want to, you can restart to regularize your period. I hope this answers your question, Miss Elizabeth. Uh, next, we have. Uh... A question uh, from Geetam: uh, Cost of the IVF treatment is how much? So it depends. You know, if you are younger with a low weight, because the injections are the most costly, but it goes around from one fifty to one lakh fifty thousand approximately, mm -hmm. with taking injections, everything in account. You know, all of all of it together. Great. Okay. Next is from S R Nair. Why women get obese after hysterectomy? and what is the solution for that okay so what happens you know when you remove your uterus all our hormones like i said mostly or you know uh, estrogen progesterone with the ovary if you've removed your ovary with the uterus then only that's a hormonal problem if you have only removed your uterus without touching the ovaries then it's not the obesity is not the cause of hysterectomy then you are you are you are lazy you are not talking <laughs> out or you are you know worried about it but if you remove your ovaries i would say you can take low dose estrogen progesterone for some time and everybody has to work out after 40 45 otherwise everybody is going to put on weight because there is hormonal disbalance male female at after 45 we need to make sure you eat right and eat healthy correct great thank you so much for that answer ma'am uh, any other question guys out there uh, you can put it in the chat box uh one question is from one of our colleagues out here uh ma'am uh, that if someone is suffering from uh, uh, uh you know period pain which is aggressive and then you know uh, she is not able to bear it uh, what medication do you suggest for that see if the pain is really severe and you've done a sonography to figure out there is no other problem inside it like a fibroid or a endometriotic cyst first you need to do a good sonography and see there is nothing around and mm -hmm. then you can take a simple cyclopharm or a meftalspas only during the days of pain otherwise you don't need to take so maybe if your pain is severe on a day two day three you can take it two times a day only on those days which will make you comfortable so that is another thing meftalspas or a cyclopharm yeah yeah thank you so much any other questions guys and still if you have confusion about ivf you can actually watch this movie movie mini uh, they have uh, very beautifully explained what exactly this uh, treatment uh, is all about especially so we can you can definitely get the answer from there next question is again from uh, sr nayar what is endometriosis metriosis cyst and what is the solution for that yeah good question so you know endometriosis is very commonly seen when females have painful periods so what happens during during your menstruation the period blood flows outside but during menstruation some blood is accumulated near your ovary every period when you bleed so that causes little bit of chocolate cyst around your ovary so you imagine your uterus which i showed you the first picture around that is the ovary and little bit blood accumulates around that and everything gets stuck up so there is adhesions around the ovary to the uterus and that causes a little bit of pain then it increases aggravates aggravates that's why i said a sonography is very important in pain because at the start of endometriosis even with oral contraceptive pills we can decrease the growth 
so it's very commonly seen now it's very very common so but only the treat you know to diagnose it a good sonography or then a laparoscopy if it's a very small one if you're at the starting phase on a sono you cannot see then you need a laparoscopy but otherwise if you have pain since 2 3 years the chocolate cyst is grown bigger then on the sono you can diagnose it great thank you so much uh next is from jyotsna hi ma'am i have pcod issue can please suggest the treatment or medicine for this so oh, i don't know jyotsna can you tell me how old are you because and what is your i means you know you if you're ob- overweight and how old are you your weight and your age that's okay. right 2216 age is 26 okay so for a age 26 nothing to worry like i said if you uh, if your periods are irregular if you don't get your periods on time means is it coming every 40 days or 50 days how do you know you have pcos were you diagnosed on the sonography you can put it in the chat box uh, or if you want you can just unmute yourself and ask directly if you want yeah sonography Okay, so fine. So if your sonography showed and if your periods are irregular, you can take the pills, like I said, and Yasmin from day three of your period, once a day for twenty days. Stop that again. Restart. Do it for three to four months, and your periods uh-huh. will regularize itself. And like I said, your twenty six years, you exercise firstly and lose weight. That's also going to help you nicely. to get your periods regular on time so exercise make sure 40 minutes of cardiovascular exercise diet control and put yourself on tablet yasmin for 3 to 4 months that will help you out so that is day 3 of your period you have to take one tablet at night after dinner for 20 days stop that restart again on day 3 do that for 3 to 4 months great thank you so much ma'am next is from ms nayar and why pcos happens and what is the cause as it is common nowadays so basically you know more it was it is genetically if your mom has or your sister has you are going to get it secondly if you if your parents or your sister didn't have nowadays we see a lot of youngsters getting pcos at a younger age that is because of lot of plastics i feel organic you know there is no organic food available everything True. they sell organic organic we do not know so avoid pesticides you know when you get fruits wash them nicely the grapes especially you see everything is white color put them soak it in water so avoid pesticides avoid plastics pollution all these three four things have increased pcos levels a lot and like i said it's a lot of thing to be genetic between the family too so i think you know the diet plays an important role if in case you maintain a proper diet and you also keep a track on what you are eating probably then you will not land up into pcos if you don't have a genetic history definitely right next is uh, from urvashi hi ma'am i am 40 and weight is 62 and have pcos have lots of hair loss what's the remedy is my weight okay see with your i don't know your height i need your height for the weight <laughs> so, <laughs> the thing is uh, but your for 40 62 it doesn't look it's too much weight uh, that's okay but remember even if you're fine with your height your weight is okay you need to exercise like i said firstly and for the hair thinning part you can take some you know hair bless is another multivitamin tablet which has biotin so biotin is one important ingredient for hair it's like a tonic for your hair so you need to take that uh, once a day for hair bless once a day for 3 months that will improve surely your quality and thinning will decrease and you know sometimes do not oil too much and wash your hair too many times that also causes hair loss so you know you need to take care of that you know too much of oiling and then a double shampoo triple shampoo that causes hair loss shampoo once and that's it so you know that's you know do not try to that's again chemical so try to use even now shampoos without chemicals like use ayurvedic shampoos preferably you know these loreals and all these big companies have lots of chemicals so avoid these sulfates chemical free shampoos that will help you perfect she has also mentioned her height as 52 so as you rightly predicted you know, that's fine any other questions i think no we'll just have last 2 3 minutes of question answer session if in case you guys don't have then i'll quickly uh, go ahead and uh, we'll close the session as well
Miss Elizabeth, I'm. We are. I mean, your voice is not that clear. If you can just put it on the chat box, that would be better. I'm uh, We are waiting for your questions, Miss Elizabeth. So anyway, I was glad I could be helpful to you guys, and I'm happy that you guys questioned. You know, so it's important that the presentation goes both the ways. That you know, I could be helpful coming and giving a talk. So Correct. If you all still have any queries, you can get back to us, and we are always happy to answer any of your questions. And remember, PCOS is no big deal. People really get scared reading about it. And like I said, eat well, exercise, everything's going to be fine. And there's nothing to, you know, these all are nutrition, you know, whatever you eat healthy, also micronutrients, you need some supplements to make sure, you know, you get the micronutrients. Okay, this one message from Elizabeth. This is not related to our session, ma'am, but she says, please conduct webinar regarding how to control respiratory infections special vaccines for it definitely we'll take your feedback and we'll work on it and probably we'll come down uh come up with a few webinars on respiratory infections as well uh is it proper to have cheese over milk for intake of calcium uh, <laughs> okay we and believe you know, too much of dairy products are not good so you know <laughs> say milk and cheese together i think you avoid that you can have one of them if you want but not two together for sure no and I, I think, ma'am, you are a very good listener as well. I've been seeing lots of questions from your and Ms. Naya. So, you know, you, you made it rather much more interactive. Thank you for that. Thank you. So I think uh, uh, good to go. I mean, again, we'd like to thank uh, Dr. Nikita for sparing her time out from a busy schedule and then, you know, presenting uh, on this PCOS. I would like to thank Apollo Infertility Clinic as well for being a partner with us and, uh, you know, providing this insight about uh, the uh, the common issues of PCOS in the, in the society. Uh, before we finish it off, I would like to just share a few slides with you and I'm sure this will be helpful. So uh, at Quantum, we have got few health packages, which is by the name of PCOD health package. You have a PCOD mini profile, you have a PCOD maxi profile and PCOD advanced profile. This can be done uh, as an in-house uh, home visit blood collection. So no matter whether you are in Mumbai, you, no matter if you are in a different location altogether, we'll make sure that you know we can get the sample collected and provide you with the results. So if in case anyone who's suspecting uh, either yourself or any of your known members, uh, if you're suspecting PCOS or PCOD, uh, probably you can uh, think about getting a profile done first and then taking a consultation also with the with the, uh, with the the panel of doctors which we have and especially with Dr. Nikita as well. She and we all will guide you uh, for a better future. There's one more thing which I'd like to uh, mention here is uh, at Quantum, we have come up with this unique uh, concept of Quantum's first the Parivar. <laughs> it's like... It's an annual subscription. It's a uh, comprehensive annual health uh, subscription for uh, yo, you and your family. And uh, round the clock throughout the year, we will provide you with services like online doctor consultation, uh, complimentary doctor consultation after every blood test. We also provide you with medical helpline number. You can uh, uh, see your uh, reports you know, digitally anywhere, access it anywhere, anytime. We provide with an online chat backup, a health spark. We also provide discounts on health checkup, blood test, medicines, discount on healthcare equipments, and we also provide paramedic and nurse support. This all benefits for you and your complete family. Uh, we are uh, putting it across at 999 rupees for uh, your complete family annually. So it's 999 per family for one year. Uh, however, we are running this promotional offer wherein we are giving it 
free of cost so guys it's again a free of cost subscription if anyone who's interested uh, in subscribing to this swast parivar plan i will uh, put the link in the chat box you can just click on that link fill your details and get subscribed and avail all the benefits thank you so much for your valuable time and uh, again stay safe stay healthy i'll i'll put the link in the uh, chat box right away so that uh, you guys if anyone who's interested in can copy it and probably you know they can uh, they can subscribe to this as well i think nayam nayar ma'am is very interested she will be the first one to subscribe from this webinar for sure <laughs> it's it's actually good for you and your complete family and uh, you know we have done this for various corporates like z have already enrolled with us we have companies like ikea where in all the employees are already a part so we are right now serving to approximately uh, 15000 families and we we launched it in the month of december so you can imagine within one and a half months we have got 15000 subscriptions not just because it's free but because the value add which we are providing uh, is something which is uh, great and th there is no other uh, company or organization who has come up with this unique idea of subscription in healthcare you you have subscription on netflix you have subscription for swiggy but then nothing is there on healthcare so that's something which is unique and innovative and uh, we we strive our best uh, to provide you with the best service what we can at quantum again thank you so much everyone for being such a lovely audience i and, and hope uh, dr nikita also enjoyed the session along with us and uh, we'll stay in touch i'll also put in my number here if in case you want to get in touch with me any time for any health related issues uh may it be anything if you want ambulance if you i i don't want everyone to call me for an ambulance rather but if you want a blood test to be done or if you want any other service in terms of healthcare we are we are definitely there to help you out uh apart from this you know if anyone who wants to know more about ivf you can connect with me we can connect you guys to dr nikita as well she is uh, a ivf she is an ivf specialist and she she is well known for her procedures all across in so many years so uh again take care guys stay safe stay healthy and uh, shabakhir thank you